Superman Son of Kal-El No. 2, which was published two days ago, witnessed a cool event featuring John Kent and his father Superman. The artwork by artist John Timms is great in this run. The book opens with John watching a news channel called The Truth on his cell phone. The Truth says that a boatload of asylum seekers have escaped the island of Gamora and are traveling over rough seas towards Metropolis. Lois then interrupted John to remind him that it was his first day at college and that he needs to hurry. John remarks that he is not usually late for anything because he can move faster than the speed of sound, but today he will not be John Kent, the son of Superman. Today he will be Finn Connors, his new secret identity. John tells his mother that although he has faced murder supervillains, he feels a little nervous. Finn Connors could be late, cause today he moves at the speed of a 2003 Cord Mother's Jeep. It was John's first day at Metropolis College with a whole new life. But suddenly, a guy named Kyle opened fire on the students, forcing John to intervene faster than 67 speeding bullets. He took down the assailant before using his X-ray vision to confirm that he was unarmed. The students gathered around John and thanked him for saving their lives, but John wasn't happy, cause he lost his secret identity. A student then approached him and wanted to give him back the wig, but John just walked away, lifted his jeep, and took off. Later on, John was spending some time on the moon, lamenting the fact that he is the son of Superman. When Superman suddenly arrived and said that Lois told him about what happened, John apologized that Finn Connors was done on the first day, although Batman and Oracle worked hard to create this alter ego. Superman told John that he did not have to apologize for doing the right thing, but he was just sorry for what he had to sacrifice to do it. Looking at planet Earth, Superman said that it's big, and John said that it's big and very small at the same time. John asked Superman if they both can see the same things, oceans struggling to breathe, forest disappearing, and ice melting, but Superman told John that he has been looking at the small, and now he needs to look at the big. The Big Earth is a place where every problem could be tackled if only the world would unite, a place where no one is left behind. John then asks Superman why he doesn't do more. Superman says that part of him holds back cause he wasn't born on Earth, so he can help, but he can't lead. But John said that Superman is the greatest hero on the planet and that he should do more and if he doesn't, then who will? Superman told John that he is the one who could do more cause Earth is his place and his planet. John said that Superman was trying to drop the weight of the world on his shoulders but Superman said that John will have friends to help bear the burden. He then told John that he needs to give him the house key. Superman gave John the key to the second fortress of solitude and asked him to look after it. He then told John that he was preparing him a new suit during his absence. The cape was for Superman when he was young, while Superman's mother and Batman repaired all its damage. John asked Superman why he gave him the suit and the key to the fortress now. Superman said that he was going to wait to give John the suit on his 18th birthday, but there is a chance that he will have to go away. Superman said that if he has to go, he wants John to look after this world, and if he feels that he needs to step up more than Superman does, Superman trusts that John will do it right. Later on at home, John got the latest news from the Truth Channel. The channel reported that the boat of the asylum seekers was sinking in the North Atlantic Ocean and no help was coming. No country has responded to their distress signal cause no one wants to be seen on the wrong side of Gamora and no one wants to upset its tyrant. Meanwhile in the sea, the asylum seekers were in a horrible situation as a kid fell into the sea and was about to be eaten alive by the sharks when John intervened and saved his life. John asked the kid about his name, and he said that his name was Takumi. John wanted to introduce himself, but Takumi said that he did not have to, as he knows who John is, he is Superman. John then lifted the boat out of the water and landed in Metropolis, where the police officers arrived to arrest the refugees. 
John intervened again and destroyed the handcuffs with his eye beams, then told the officer that these people need help, not handcuffs. The officer then told his men not to restrain the refugees. John then told Takumi that everything was going to be just fine and promised to check on him. On a nearby roof, John was interrupted by the reporter on the Truth Channel, who said that these people come for help, but they are treated like criminals, and asked John if he knew what he started. The guy wanted to thank John for saving his life from the mad gunman back at college, as he was the one who approached John and gave him back the wig. His name is Jay Nakamura, and asked John if he wanted his wig back. Jay said that it must be hard to be Superman's son, as John may want to be something lesser, someone smaller. He said that he might be able to help with that, but he needed to have a conversation with John first. He said that John needs to know what he did today and where it leads. Gamora is supposed to be a paradise, and desperate people fleeing the country does not fit with that propaganda. John swooped in and picked up a boatload of consequences. The tyrant of Gamora will want John Gunn, and he is capable of that. President Henry Bendix will do whatever it takes to destroy John Kent. I like the fact that John is playing a bigger role in the DC Universe, having a new sidekick and villain, and I definitely like the artwork in this run. Let me know what you think about this book, and don't forget to subscribe, share, and like. Thanks for watching and have a nice one.